Searching for the right effects pedals in 2023 can be quite dizzying, with so many companies putting out all of these new innovative effect types, as well as their own nuances on existing common effect types. How are you, as a saxophone player nonetheless, supposed to find the right pedal for you? In this video, I'm going to discuss the only two pedals that you will ever need in your rig to get a wide range of effects. The first is the Red Panda Tensor, and the second is the Earthquaker Devices Avalanche Run. I chose these two pedals for two main reasons. One, they're covering a wide range of effects that chances are you're probably looking for anyway. And two, is their simple accessibility. With these two pedals alone, you're going to cover such a huge wide range of effects all the way from pitch shifting to octaves to fifths to other intervals that you might not even have thought of, as well as delays, reverbs, reverse delays. You're going to be able to do some uh, micro looping on top of extra effects such as glitchy and granular effects and even some tape stops and degraded tape loops. So it's quite a wealth of things that you can find in these two pedals alone. Additionally, these two pedals are extremely intuitive to use. They're not something that you're going to need to spend a lot of time menu diving or fine tuning to get the right parameters you need just for that super special sound. And this is really helpful to us as saxophone players who need to be standing up, who need to be playing live and addressing the audience and the band and in the music and not needing to sit and scroll through all these menus. Now with that said, let's go ahead and take a closer look at why these are the only two pedals you need. The first pedal we will look at is the Tensor, and this pedal will cover our pitch shifting, looping, granular, and glitchy needs. A common effect type that saxophonists look for is pitch shifting in order to beef up or complement your sound, and the typical go-to is an octave up or an octave down for a more aggressive or, for lack of a better word, beefy approach. The Tensor can do that with its pitch function here, so if I put it around here, we should get an octave up. You also get the same thing with the octave down. Now, in addition to octaves ups and downs, the tensor can do a multitude of other intervals too. It's capable of seconds, minor thirds, perfect fourths, fifths, and flat sevenths, as well as double octave up or double octave down. So let's listen to a few of those different pitch settings. I really find the fifth upsetting to be one that I gravitate towards a lot in my playing because octaves are okay. Sometimes they can feel a little cheesy perhaps, but a fifth can really blend into your sound nicely. Now, on top of all of these really awesome intervals, um, Tensor is another unique feature of this tensor is that you can set the bypass switch to momentary so that you can change uh, so that the change only happens when you hold down the bypass switch. Um, and this can be uh, used in a numerous creative waves. So for example, if I set it to a fifth and I set this to momentary, if I hit the pedal on, the light will flash saying it's on, but it'll only stay on. Um, as long as this is held down. So when you're playing a line, so there you can see I only needed it on when I need it when I wanted it in my playing, which is really nice. So you don't have to worry about uh, double clicking in order to turn it on and off. So a very nice feature there. You can also use the speed knob to create a chorusing kind of sound, which is a little more fine tuning. Basically, if you take the speed knob and put it just a little bit off, you should get a nice chorusing sound because it'll slightly detune it. Let's turn the pitch off. Thank you. 
So even there, you get a chorus effect, which was never intended for this pedal. Um, additionally, Tensor has a very useful 12 second looper, which is another common effect that saxophonists look for. Now, we'll talk about the limitations of it being a 12 second looper later in the video, but I think 12 seconds is plenty to really work with. Now the looper is uh, activated using this switch here. So if I have the pedal on, and I put it into the over setting, this is gonna allow you to create a bass loop. And then when you want to overdub, you can just click it again. So let me just put something in a loop. So let's overdub a layer now. Okay, so there you have it, a loop with some nice overdubbed layers. So to erase it, you just simply click that and it's gone. The second function here, it says RAC for record. And this is nice because it's the same exact thing, but when you go to click it again, instead of overdubbing, it's going to erase it and add a new loop. So this could be useful if you just need a temporary loop and then something for the next section, for example. <laughs> Okay, so for on the fly changing of your loop, really great there. This one called NXT, I think is written for next. It's a little different. Basically, it's going to, it's constantly recording. And when the loop is finished, it'll play back whatever you just put into it exactly one time. So after that one time, it's going to erase and it's gonna throw in whatever it was recording next. For example, <laughs> So I played it back and now it's gone. So now, you might hear my voice in there. Now this is basically just a one repeat delay, but if you do it really short, you can start getting into the glitchy effects. So see how quick the, the loop is right there. Now another function that I wanna talk about is the time knob here. Now the time knob works in correlation with the loop. Um, and if you put it this way, you'll see the purple light engage, it's gonna slow everything down in your loop. So just for an example, let me go back to normal setting, record something very simple in there. Now this is gonna slow it down. On top of that, you can speed it up. Okay, you get the idea. Now what's cool is if you combine this with the next pattern, you're gonna get some really cool glitchy effects going on here. we can combine it with our pitch effects as well too. So let's add in a fifth. Or we can speed it up for some extra cool glitchy stuff.
You also have a random knob, which randomizes the pitch, the time, and the speed. If these are at noon, though, it will not randomize it, only if the parameters are adjusted. Pretty extreme, but you can see how there's a wealth of glitchiness stuff in there. Now, another nice thing I talked about earlier is you can have a tape stop effect as well, too. So if you have a loop, you can adjust the speed on a fine tune like tape stop right here. And then at noon, you get nothing, which is pretty cool. Now, additionally, the switch on the right is the direction of your loop. So now that I have a loop in FWD, that obviously means that we're just playing forward. And if I put it on reverse, the loop will play in reverse. So here's reverse. And ALT stands for alternate, so it'll flip between forward and reverse. So already right there, you have a whole major looping function, which is really, really nice. Now, even further, why this pedal is so great and why I recommend it over pedals such as the Whammy, which is a very common pitch shifter that saxophonists go for, is because if you have an expression pedal, you can apply it to this and you can control any of these knobs with this. And what's super cool, if you listen to the pitch sound when I adjust it like this, it goes in steps. <laughs> Let me put it in full so you can really hear. If I set a parameter, let's do a fifth, and I put this at zero, you're not going to hear any change because it's going to pretend that the knob is at zero. But when I push it down, it's going to glide up instead of step motion, it's going to glide up like portamento style into that fifth. obviously do it with any of the, the functions. So really, really expands all the things that you can do. You can also do the tape stop function. So for example, let me put this to there. All right. In that case, I was just holding out um, one note, and that's what happens. Um, but you can also do with a loop. So for some fun there. While the Tensor is such a unique pedal that is so perfect and intuitive for saxophonists, the dedicated delay and or reverb pedal that we're looking for has so many options. So many companies have covered these classic effects that I will say to do some research because there might be one niche thing that stands out to you in a particular pedal different from the one we have right here. I myself prefer the Maris Polymoon for my ambient delay pedal, but it's a little niche and it has a steeper learning curve. The Avalanche Run, however, it covers all you will ever really need in a beautifully simple way that has some hidden tricks up of its sleeve. First of all, it'll do your simple delay and reverb with such super intuitive knobs. You have your decay and mix, so this is the amount of reverb, and this is how long the reverb will last. For the top, you have your delay functions, the time, so the time between your delays, how many repeats you want, the tone, so if you push it uh, counterclockwise, it'll be a little darker, and clockwise, it'll be a little brighter, and then you have a mix, which is just how much delay do you want in there. So already super intuitive. If you plug it on, it's gonna be super simple. We'll just put the time at a regular thing, some low repeats, and we're not gonna change our tone. And here's some 
uh, saxophone with delay. Great. Now, as you start to mess with the different tones, it's going to change your delay thing. I really like having a low time on my delay to have a lot of time for those repeats to come back in. And I also like some high repeats and I tend to like darker tones, but I'm going to show you a cool trick with the brighter tones um, towards the end of this part. So this is it with some longer delay time, a lower mix and more repeats. <laughs> You also can do the classic more of a slap back delay um, with short repeats and a quick time. You can see the light going crazy and just keep that at noon. So some simple uh, slap back delays that you have right there. So for this next part, we'll turn the delay off. So we're hearing no delay tones and we're gonna feature the reverb. Again, the mix is how much of the reverb you want and the decay is how long do you want it to last for. So let's turn the mix at noon and the decay really low. <laughs> So a real simple delay, or I mean reverb. Now I really like turning the mix all the way up and you can see how this will sound. Yeah, and of course you can combine the two and have some really nice ambience. On top of that, the delay has what I consider to be the best reverse delay that I've heard out there. So if you click this switch to the left, it's going to turn it into a reverse delay. Now it's interesting and what I think makes it so good, it's not purely a reverse delay. It's going to play back your thing once forward and then play it back however many times reverse and it goes between the two, which I think sounds better than just a pure reverse delay.
absolutely beautiful. On top of that, if you put the tone this way, your repeats are gonna get brighter and brighter each time. And if you max the reverb, you're gonna hear it's gonna really sound like a snowy um, avalanche kind of soundscape, just like the, the, uh, the art suggests. So let's check that out. Absolutely cool. Now, I told you I was gonna show you a cool function with the tone knob being really bright and clockwise. And that's gonna be, if you turn your repeats up to not quite maximum, cause they're gonna oscillate and get out of control really quickly, but about here, it will actually create a mini loop. And if you have it in tails mode like I do, which is where if you uh, turn the pedal off, it's still playing. It's just not taking any new information into the pedal. You've created a mini kind of loop and with the, the tone knob turning brighter and brighter, you're gonna cut out a lot of the lows and it's gonna feel like a really degraded kind of tape loop. So let's hear that. So basically we're just gonna let it sit there and it's gonna start doing its thing. We'll add some more reverb in. It's gonna get really distorted pretty quickly. You can already hear it starting to break up and crunch. Yeah, starting to get really rough there. Put it in full wet reverb, which is nice. Really crunchy there. You can play over the top of it too. So it's a nice little backdrop. It's starting to get really aggressive on us. So turn that mix down. You can hear that distortion. You can also manipulate the direction by going to reverse. So it sounds really like a mangled tape right now. If you ask me, I think that sounds really nice. And lastly, you can start to combine all of the elements into one thing. So I'm going to max out the re I'm going to max out the reverb, which is something I love to do. I'll put on some repeats and we'll have some fifths going in there. Now, another thing I forgot to mention with the tensor, with this next function, if you combine it with pitch shifting, you can kind of get a, a delay, a pitch shifted delay. So for instance, let's put the, this will be our loop here.
So there you have it. So a nice little combination, a little ambient rumination. And even if ambient isn't really your need or the thing that you want, with these two pedals alone, you really cover all the stuff that you want to do. Now, it's also worth noting that despite the vastness that these two pedals can achieve together, there are some limitations that you should consider. One is that the looper in the tensor is only 12 seconds. Now, personally, I like this limitation because it forces you to be more creative with how you use your loops, as well as um, me being a fan of micro loops. So I made a video recently, uh, getting close to a year ago now, about how I like to make micro loops with exactly these two pedals. So I'll put that in the description and you should consider checking that out to see how micro loops really are the way to go in terms of the polyphonic envy that us saxophones have. Um, uh, however, I can see how some saxophonists might be annoyed by this if they're looking for looping entire riffs to improvise over. Um, so maybe consider something like the Ditto, the small little Ditto looper. It's only about $99 if you really, really want to have super long loops for that kind of thing. Uh, another limitation is that while it covers what I consider to be the bread and butter effects that saxophonists look for, it obviously does not cover some other effects such as distortion, fuzz, and overdrives. And these effects are tricky to deal with in live settings, and to be done well, they require some sort of gate pedal or some sort of microphone isolation. And it's, it's going to have a lot of bleed and potential feedback, so it's something you want to be careful for and maybe avoid when you start getting into pedals anyway. Um, yeah, on top of that, you also won't get a lot of modulation effects such as phasing or tremolo, but I don't find those effects nearly as useful because unless you're using them to manipulate your loops or whatever, your acoustic tone is going to eat them up and you're not going to hear them coming out of your amp over the sound of your saxophone anyway. Um, another limitation is that these pedals are not exactly cheap being boutique. New, they're about $300 each, and you might find cheaper pedals that can do similar jobs. And I also admit that the Avalanche run is really, really awesome, but it is the more replaceable pedal in this lineup. Again, if you're only looking for delay or only a reverb, you can definitely find cheaper options. TC Electronics, their flashback in the Hall of Fame, I think it's called, are really good cheap alternatives for delay and reverb. Um, but again, it has some really nice stuff in it, and it's super solid and intuitive. Um, I will hold on the Tensor though, because the Tensor is a truly unique experience because it covers everything you need in a pitch shifting pedal. And if you have this expression pedal to go along with it, I really don't think you need anything else. It also gets you some glitchy effects, some micro looping. It really does all of it. It's extremely intuitive. And for $300, I think it's an extremely well, well priced item and something that I would really consider before buying anything else in your pitch shifting department. Since finding the right pedal can be difficult, I hope these recommendations were useful to you and I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and let me know in the comments what kind of videos you'd like to see from me. Until next time.